Hello, YouTube is Alex here, back with some more Space Engineers. Got a very, very, very odd looking ship here, as many people have said in my Discord, uh, with also an equally odd name. I'm calling it the UMA Glamriol, which, if you know Skyrim lore, that word is actually Elvish uh, for the secret of life. Yes, it's just weird in so many ways. And if it wasn't already obvious, um, judging by all the, uh, the red crosses on it, uh, this is a medical ship. Now, also, before people might, might be wondering, what the blithering hell is up with the design? I know, it's weird. At this point, I was just throwing things together and see uh, see what worked. And plus, someone uh, commented on one of my videos a little while ago, um, asking about make, if I could make a ship based out of spheres. Well, I think you can see what's, uh, <laughs> where I was going with here, as I have been using spheres in its construction. And, I don't know, people are going to say, what, this is such a weird creation. Uh, and yes, it is. Um, I mean, it's not strictly necessary in a true survival sense, but if you're role-playing, then I suppose this ship does have a purpose. Because, like I said, it's a medical ship. I would definitely call it a specialist medical ship, because it's not like a flying hospital. It does not have the medical, like, the, the bed space, and just, like, it can't handle many patients. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, you could probably handle a maximum of about 30 patients with some of them in cryo storage uh, for, I don't know, later examination or whatever. Um, now, the whole secret of life thing kind of does have a purpose with this thing, which I will be hinting to <laughs> in one of the spheres. This very interesting contraption here, which once again has no purpose in a survival sense. This is just kind of a roleplay thing, but yeah, as weird as this thing is. Um, but yeah. It's kind of weird. Now, each sphere, uh, I would say, does it is completely self-sufficient. Each sphere, like you could cut this ship into four pieces, separating each sphere, and as long as it's not been the outer hull of the sphere has not been compromised, uh, it can self-sustain itself because it has its own power and oxygen supply. And the bridge is even a sphere with um, kind of interesting thing going on. Doesn't that now? Isn't this just me? But doesn't that look, look like a like a bit like a head? And these could be two hands either side, like held up next to your head. I don't know. It's just a connection my brain seems to have uh, made here. Some people also commented, because like I said, this ship has been shown around a fair bit in my Discord. Uh, so well, speaking of which, the link to that is in the description. So, you know, if you want to see some sneak peeks of anything I'm, uh, I'm working on, then, uh, you know, go over there and say hi. Uh, I'm usually around uh, some of the time. But people were saying, what an interesting front. Kind of looks like a battering ram. Well, not really. I wasn't trying to go for the battering ram look, uh, but I suppose it's rudimentary protection for uh, the front area, which I'll get to the inside uh, shortly here. Now, if you're wondering, does this use any mods? Now, if my memory serves me well, which it never usually does, um, but I, I'm only using one mod, and that's the armor ramps mod. Simply put, um, the spheres here are very difficult to do without it, as this block here, this white block here, uh, is actually one of those modded blocks, as I just needed that particular shape. Because um, you can continue with vanilla blocks, you can continue the curve uh, in a circle sense. But if you wanted to make a sphere like this, I needed these blocks sort of in between those sections there, as you can sort of see uh, where I'm going. It's like on the cross here. Um, those modded blocks are here, 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 and here. Obviously, pointing with the cross here. Whatever, but. You know, that's that. We've got two engine bays under here. Obviously, this is uh, hydrogen powered. It's quite fast for a medical ship, as I would say that's its only real defense. As uh, in terms of guns, we really don't have that many at all, to be perfectly honest with you. There's like one there, there's two up here, and that's it. So it's not meant to be in the fight at all. Obviously, no shields, little guns, you know. So speed, I suppose, is going to be its uh, only uh, asset here. Uh, also, if you're wondering, um, if it oh wait, there's also a gun over here as well. Um, this ship can actually land on a moon. Uh, I have tested it. Uh, it will just about land on a moon. Just be careful. This ship is quite heavy um, and just take that into account. You know, you're flying a very large hunk of metal. Just just, just be gentle because <laughs> you don't want to like blow off the engines because the landing gear are on the engines. I should also mention if you're landing it on, on a moon, uh, tilt the ship forward because if you turn off the dampeners when you're on the ground it'll very slowly lean backwards because it's a bit back heavy. Um, so anyway getting on to the things here this is the bridge if that wasn't already obvious because um, 
rambles. Uh, we've got two landing pads left and right here with um, those little holes that are actually access to the inside of the ship. Uh, we also have a back hangar, which I imagine would be used uh, if you had like an ambulance vehicle to actually bring patients on board. Um, but that's that there. We also have some random decoys people were also mentioning in the Discord, like what's going on with that? Pretty much no purpose, other than the fact that, like I said, this thing has no shields and no real defense, so a couple decoys might help there. Uh, and it, you can also see a bolted on afterthought, but I actually realized I did not have a connector, so there's one just sticking out the back there. So, I don't know, let, let me know what you think uh, of the just the general design uh, down in the comments below, because it is a very weird design. And one last thing before I get to the inside tour, um, one thing that kind of I don't know, there's a little bit of back history with uh, back history, um, English, please. But yeah, one thing to, that we, in the building process is you see like each sphere, right, with the solar panels on the left and right side. Uh, that was meant to be uh, a the, a basis of a bit like a mini oasis station to, that would sit like on a barren moon or planet, uh, and it would basically be I would like fill it with plant life and uh, other various mods like that to basically make it a mini oasis. I might still do that. But at the time, I was like, no, you know what? I cut it. I cut that station away from its foundations, brought it up to space, stuck four of them together, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? Uh, I have the basis of a ship here, and as you can kind of see, that's uh, essentially what happened. So actually, let's shut up now and get inside this thing and show you really what's going around here. So there's several ways in. Uh, you could either get, you could either go in through these little um, holes here down to the. Uh, inside there or you can go through the hangar which I'm gonna go through the hangar just to uh, show you what's going on oh yeah there's also another thruster pack up there along with the main engine pack so yeah this thing can move at a fair pace here so like I said in here it's pretty empty uh, just uh, is enough to fit you know whatever whatever ship can fit through a 3x2 gap so you know a small ambulance would probably be fine here door controls are there air vent some storage you, you know the works it's all pretty uh, simple stuff here so uh, let's pop inside and show you what's going on the actual interior walkable space of this ship is not that much. Uh, I mean, it's just probably because I've had I went with a more corridor-based approach rather than large open rooms, which then I subdivided accordingly. So, um, so if you're coming in from the back there, it is mirrored on the other side. I should mention because that over there is the central walkway. But if you were, if you go through these doors, it'll take you upstairs to the corresponding uh, landing pads on the left and right hand side. Uh, so through here. Uh, we'll, this is going into the main sphere area, but we'll show you up to the bridge first because that's where we're at. And yes, this ship does require the use of jetpacks because I just couldn't really figure an easy way uh, to get stairs in a such a compact fashion. So I just went with the whole vertical corridor and jetpack your way up here idea. So this is actually just below the bridge, um, which has the only assemblers in here and some program blocks and timers. You can also see I used walls here as a partial walkway. Uh, symbol there. So these these things, technically, all these like program blocks, they do nothing other than to allow you to put something else uh, in here in the future. Uh, also, the beacon there, which could serve as the only light source, but you know what? I just shoved it there for uh, for laughs. Uh, so going up to the bridge, as you can see, the access there um, got a fair bit of space. I suppose the actual visibility is not that good there, but uh, up here we actually have a secondary cockpit if um, if you need a co-pilot, but we have the uh, jump drive. Just the one, but you know, don't expect this thing to be travelling too terribly far. Um, separate oxygen supply, generation, power, and like I said, most of these spheres, including the bridge, do have separate power and oxygen facilities, so there's no one central uh, reactor room or anything, so this ship does have redundancy, um, pretty much down to a T. Uh, we also have some cargo containers just to the side of said um, cargo containers. And actually down here, if you're wondering, this is actually just a, a simple sort of access uh, for the air vent. Uh, so the air can actually come up here. You're not actually really meant to go in here because you can't exactly get out. So I just have to jetpack my way out. Uh, and actually just show you the ship stats here. Uh, nope, that's the wrong button. Um, buttons, please. So there's the ship's weight, 2.817508 million kilos. So reasonable weight uh, just take into account and uh, yeah that's that's the ship stats I'll give you a quick flight test in a minute if I, if I remember to do so but let's actually get to the inside of the ship because I've seen to have normally I do the bridge last but uh, no I've done the bridge first because of where things are at so let's actually go inside the main spheres and show you what's going on and yes glass walkway uh, so so the immediate like the first room you enter as soon as you come in assuming you had like patients running it down here uh, we have the ICU room or the intensive care unit room so we have four beds and just some, like I said, this is all role-playing, so like these things, 
you press a button and you got some green lights, so you could just imagine this is like some futuristic healing source, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so like I said, there's four uh, units here you could use. We have display, you could have some like patient stats on there. Uh, these are air vents, but you could almost imagine in, I don't know, more gruesome sense, they could be drainage for blood uh, in some gruesome operation, I don't know. But um, it's very, you know, it's very bright in, the, in most of these rooms, it's very clean looking, but, you know, it's a medical ship, it's got to look very bright and clean. And here is a, uh, a slightly more elevated look of the situation here. So you can, you, you can see I used the whole rotors uh, with a small ship head, if you're wondering how I actually get small ships. Uh, it's connected to a large ship and running everything because uh, now they've added that simple just remove the head and then go into the menu and add a small head uh, within the menu without doing any kind of fancy sort of like you know get a small rotor and try and push it onto the um, big rotor to try and get the small head onto the large block and uh, that was a headache so I never used it but now that's an easy uh, fix so yes there's also plenty of turrets you'll notice as I walk around here simply put it's just I suppose for termination of uh, defective subjects which will be more important down in nearly the front room. So, uh, like I said, each each one of these spheres is self-sufficient, so there's actually a downstairs portion to every sphere, except the experimenting room, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, which simply just has uh, some storage, some oxygen production, storage, um, did I say power? Um, well, I just did now. So the power actually in, the, in this particular one is hidden, and we also have another cockpit a little further forward in this sphere. So, heading upstairs, um, or up the... Uh, passage I should say. Let's go into the next room. Oh yeah, these are a couple more program blocks just in case you need that. Now there's technically no air uh, like, you know, air vents in these corridors. So you don't want to stay here for too long, but you be if you're just going from room A to room B or vice versa, it does not matter because each time you open the door, the air will refresh so, you know, you, as long as you don't hang around in there for too long, you should be fine. All oh, this talk is making me thirsty. Okay, so in here in here is the general purpose medical area, hence why it has uh, more spread out beds. We have the medical facilities here, you can just sit here and wait for your attention. This, th there's a, this, the, 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 these are the downstairs um, sections, which like I said, it's all part of the self-sufficient nature. Turret, just security sake, and uh, yes, more beds. So you could be sitting here, flying through space, recovering from whatever sort of less severe injuries. As, like I said, this is probably the, the less severe unit. Um, and all the rest. So jumping down here, like I said, just goes down to the under uh, under the uh, uh, inner working section with power, um, storage, oxygen stuff. You know, you, you know how it works. It's just it's just pretty simple stuff. Um, God, I'm losing the train of English here. So let's go back up here and go into the probably more interesting for role playing aspect room and serves zero purpose in a real survival situation. That is this thing. <laughs> This is the experimenting room. I suppose this is where the whole Glamriel name kind of comes into more effect. If, if, it's, if this ship is the secret of life or houses uh, ways to find out the secrets of life, then perhaps this machine is the answer for it. And simply put, you could just imagine you are just... This is, this is either for highly experimental um, medical procedures or just purely just experimenting on people. So how does how this control button work? Uh, very simple. Uh, you press 1. That will start up the spin, the, the, the well, the rotor assembly up there. Um, I've actually used some ground down tire blocks, which is something I don't normally use ground down blocks, but I did on this thing here. Uh, two tenny turns the rotor off, which I'll get to in a minute. And you can also tell how slow that spin up is. Uh, all done intentionally for a dramatic effect. If only there was some decent sound. Press some, press this for flashy lights, because why not? And then you press the last button, which activates whatever medical just evil monstrosity beam that is and that is just a machine that does look really cool i just wish it actually had sound because right now it does it sounds pretty pup as it currently is um but there you go so just imagine if you're sitting on this bed here <laughs> if, I can, if i can actually get on the bed just with this uh <laughs> this freaking whatever the hell's happening to you with this machine now the cryopods left and right if you're wondering that would be for storing any test subjects uh, and also turrets directly above them, which would be for immediate termination of defective test subjects, because you never know what you know, they, we could we could end up with a zombie outbreak if you uh, ain't careful there. And obviously turning off the rotor, it's a nice and slow deceleration done entirely intentionally, um, just just for dramatic effect. Uh, and this section does have an underground under keep saying underground does have a below floor section, but it's a lot smaller uh, just because of. Um, 
really this actually this this whole uh, section here is sunk in a level as you can kind of see so uh, simple again just air air vents power oxygen production you know every sphere has the these facilities so you can sort of see what's going on there so pop through there uh, okay the doors actually solid this time last time I came in here this door if you stood on it actually you fell through it so we're going into the very front end of the ship which is the last of the spheres and this one I really do like it's the cryo storage room we have a total of 18 cryo bays in here so you can store plenty of people um, for future use or just storage after they've been healed or maybe they can't be healed and have to be transported somewhere else um, so you know that's all well and good so you're not really meant to get off, go off these catwalks but we have um, oxygen and some power there as you can see um, so that's the, that's the first floor second floor is the same six in total uh, just three on each side there's the air vent and then finally at the very bottom a little bit of storage and the bottom three storage uh, cargo the, 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 the cryo containers uh, there is actually no below deck uh, floor to this sphere because this um, particular assembly uh, of just stuff actually does exist from floor to ceiling um, so there's actually nothing there's probably I think there's a couple of conveyors below the uh, interior wall block but it just serves to really uh, pipe up these uh, cargo containers and I think it adds a couple of gyros and stuff so there we go so that is the cryo room and that's pretty much the medical ship. It's it's something I definitely spent probably way longer than I should because no, the thing is, with any ship I any of these like big ships I build, like this one I really do like, despite its impracticalness and its survival sense. I really like this ship. I I, I put a lot of work into this, but knowing how YouTube works and how how like viewers work, and not not just my subscribers per se, but just how like videos in, on my channel get viewed, this video probably won't get meant much more than I would call the average amount of views. Uh, for one of my space engineers videos maybe like a couple thousand views I don't know but you know something like this I would I would kind of hope for more views but then some of my videos like the freaking s3 se that weird contraption the thing that sparked the, my channel's insane growth you know that thing's got 30 40 K views and I barely did anything with that shit and this thing this one this ship I probably spent a couple days working on and quite a lot of time on it and it prob knowing my luck it probably won't get any kind of extraordinary amount of views probably only the average not that I'm ungrateful for any views I'm grateful for anything um, people want to watch but it's just the fact that it's just the fact that you know it's not it's never proportional to the amount of time I spend uh, on said ship so if you give me a second let me just uh, delete that and I'll quickly show you uh, the flight performance uh, of this thing um, so yep okay so uh, the actual gyroscopic performance is pretty good so that's just doing a roll test uh, if I do a well actually I'm not going to do an entire barrel roll because or forward flips that's taking forever so a bit slow on the up and down controls um, the actual forward acceleration is respectable um, deceleration is okay and then left and right performance is probably very slow because it doesn't really have many uh, thrusters left and right at all. It's just got those side ones. Now, the couple of, couple of ion thrusters there, I would say, are just for like maneuvering assistance, which there is a toggle control number six, and there's turret control number four, and number nine is the hangar door, and number one is jump drive. Uh, so that's all self-explanatory. So that's pretty much, that's the UMA Glamoriel, which, weird ship, weird name, just weird in general but I like it it was a medical ship first time I've ever made such a thing um, so there you have it let me know what you think down below in the comments uh, as, and as always um, in this particular case uh, the workshop link is in the description as well along with my discord um, server link as well if you want to say hi and all the rest so anyway thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video